Hello and in today's STM32 programming we will be covering buttons as inputs. The project I have already imported from the previous video's blink example. So all we need to do is wire up the input pins. Now I have two switches connected to PB15 and another switch connected to PA8. Now firstly what we want to do is configure them as digital input. So GPIO input on PB15 and PA8 as well. And now we can add a user label to them. So I'm going to name the first switch as SW1 and the second switch as SW2. So switch one and two. And then we go to our system core configuration. If it would let me expand it, go to GPIO. Then we can see SW2 and SW1 and you can see it highlighted on the right. Now they have a configuration for GPIO pull up or pull down. We are going to be using pull ups on these inputs since the switch is connected to ground when the switch is contacted. So do that for both switches and then we save and now it will generate our code. Now we can look at the C main file. Nothing much has changed here. We have the whole init system core and GPIO in it. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to delete this file. We want to copy from the blink example. We want to copy C main and GPIO all.cpp into our source files. And then from the includes folder, we copy the GPIO.h file and we put that into our include folder. And that's what we need from the previous project. Now we can open our C main file. Yes. And close down our icon file. We want to open the GPIO hull.cpp and the GPIO hull.h. We can minimize the code layout and we can use this as a base to work off of. So we create another class that inherits the GPIO base. And this is going to be the in. And we create the constructor and the destructor here. This is going to be in the public space. And then we copy the parameters over here, which is going to be in the private space. So it's going to have the same identical. Technically, you can move this to the GPIO base class if you would like. Then it's going to take the same parameters as the out. But the in does not have an initial state since that is determined by the state of the pin. Then we copy the function for the read pin and we paste it over here. So it's going to be identical to the GPIO outputs read. So we copy that and we put it in here. Then we have, then it's going to be a member of the in. And that's about it for a digital input. Now we can go to our main function and underneath where we declare the LEDs, we can declare a D in class and that will be switch one and a second one, which is going to be switch two. And they're going to take almost identical parameters to the D out class, which we are going to find in our main.h. We can move that over to the side. We can see switch one pin. We just copy that over and then we need the port for it. So switch to port. We just move that to the correct class, copy it, paste and just change it to switch one and switch to our uh, switch one pin. Okay, so that is our D in class. Now I'm going to remove the running LEDs and the toggle LED. Now the running LED code is removed. So first thing we want to do is we want to take SW1. We say dot read. And since that returns already a GPIO state, we can take LED1. And we say dot right and then we take the output from switch one switch one's read and put that into led one since the led is current synced 
it operates on inverted logic which is identical to the switches logic which is also if the switch is pressed it is low so if the lead is written low the switch the lead will be on so it works identically so we don't need to invert the logic here then we take lead 2 and switch 2 and then we run the code if i press the button the led goes on if i leave the button the led is off if I press the button here, the first LED goes on. So this is switch one, which I'm pressing now. And this is switch two that I am pressing now. And that's an introduction to using buttons as input on the GPIO for an STM32. A like, share, comment and subscribe is always appreciated. Thank you. Have a nice day.